All right, good afternoon. My name is Daryl Josh. I'm the director for Vitima, the Virgin Islands Territory Emergency Management Agency. Today we have the Hurricane Hunters aircraft and crew here on the island of St. Croix. They spend time with the junior ROTC, ROTC, getting a chance to see the aircraft, talk to the flight crew, as well as to see potentially if you want a career as a meteorologist or an Air Force a Reserve, where you can get your start from. It's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, again, my amateur radio operators have come out. I've invited some of the senators from the 34th legislature. I've invited cabinet officials to come out to see what the hurricane hunters are all about. When that information comes to my team. I present it to you as soon as I get it. We're at a uh, time of crisis. Every four hours, we get updates from the hurricane hunters. They're flying basically 24 hours a day to bring that data to us about three to 400 miles away that hurricane's heading this way. That's the importance of today. I'm Captain Inganero. I'm part of the 53rd Weather Conscious Squadron based out of Keesler uh, Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. And this is our second home away from home down in St. Croix. So this is kind of the heart of the mission here. This, is a, this tube will punch out about 25 of these per mission. And this is what's going to get you all the data that updates the track models uh, that everybody's interested in the spaghetti plots. Um, once we get the data, we send the information to the weather officer. The weather officer sends that real time to the National Hurricane Center. And so just as soon as we get the data, the National Hurricane Center has the data. It can update the models and the forecasts. Uh, we usually travel with five people, uh, two pilots, a navigator, a loadmaster, and a weather officer. A uh, normal mission lasts 12 to 14 hours. Uh, usually stay in the storm about six hours. And then it uh, looks like a postal tube mailing system. Yeah. And we'll uh, hopefully not return to sender. <laughs> <laughs> you get any of these seagulls flying by. <laughs> right. Yep. So what happens is uh, the plane's pressurized, so once that door opens, it just sucks it out. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. So we can have four in the air that we're tracking at one time. And it's tracking wind speed, humidity, temperature, uh, all, all the data needed to update the forecast models. So it's actually designed to disintegrate in the water. Uh, so that way, uh, when it does hit the water, we don't recover them. Uh, but the, the little, there's a little computer chipboard in there, and that's actually designed to disintegrate over time. Yep. So they do not get recovered. So there's the actual sensor itself. Uh, it gets wind speed based on GPS, so it knows where it is and it knows where it's going. So based on that, it can kind of reverse calculate the winds. Wow. Here, so this is a uh, what we call the sond warming station. And what it does is it keeps the sond uh, with an active GPS signal so that as soon as it leaves the aircraft, it doesn't have to sit there and acquire it. It already has it. So we'll turn them on, put them in here, and it'll keep them warm. And then once we punch them out, it'll uh, immediately start feeding data. Uh, so Loadmaster will sit here. Um, there's a little button. I think it's uh, that one right there, and it'll punch the sons out. Uh, so as soon as the weather officer gives him the okay, he'll, they'll punch them out. We can track four of them on the computer screen, and it relays all that data to the plane. And we uh, quality control it with the weather officer, and then real time send it up to the National Hurricane Center. And we're always in contact with the Hurricane Center, so if there's something that with our data they don't like, we can adjust it in, so we're constantly talking to them. Uh, they're giving us new route updates. Uh, sometimes they'll have us, hey, go check out the Northeast Quad again, or uh, go check out this part of the storm. So as we fly and, and the, the dynamic environment is changing, um, we can always change what we're doing based on the customer. Years ago, but even tropical storms can cause a lot of damage, and we have to be aware of that. But more than aware, we have to learn more about that, and we have to be prepared, and we have to be prepared. This is our opportunity for you to start in that preparing practicing, developing first a plan, and practicing that plan so that we can act when we need. Thank you. The islands and also the media getting the people, getting the citizens engaged and getting them to make the right decision and prepare for these storms. Um, a lot of people sit there and say that, you know, Maria and Irma, you know, those are once in a quarter century, once 50 year storms. That's not the case. We had them, what, two weeks apart? And we could have the next one coming up this year. We could have it the following year. So it's not a question of if this is ever going to happen again. It's really a question of when it's going to happen again. So anything you can do to get people prepared, um, please do so. And to the people out there, please do what you can. Prepare for these storms. Uh, have a plan of action. That's so important. And it can, it can mean the lives of your family and yourself in the long run. So we're here to do that. We also salute our, our FEMA partners, our guard partners, 
and of course emergency management. And when it all comes down to every disaster, every disaster is local. So it all comes down to that local official. We work really close with the local officials. So science goes into those decisions. That's something that's really important to think about. Science goes into that um, every single time. So I'm going to thank everybody. And, and right behind me, the hurricane hunters, both at NOAA and also the hurricane hunters, the Air Force, folks, they're just heroes. What's our goal? Get people away from the storm. What do they do? They go towards the storm. It's the opposite, right? So they're going towards the storm to get the data that we need to help us make those forecasts, right? Sometimes you can't see it on satellite. Sometimes you can't see where the center is using the other tools. It's the only tool we have sometimes to be able to see that. And listen to this. The data we get from all the hurricane hunters when it gets into the models can make them 20% better. Think about that. That's a lot. That really is a significant number and, and making this.